Well, there are many other examples we could show you of motion, but I'd like to move on because I think there are many other interesting things that might amuse you even more. Uh, the next subject I would like to talk about is the subject of heat. Now, you might think that heat sounds rather different from motion, and it may appear that there's really no connection between the two. But in fact, there is. In fact, heat is a form of motion. What makes you feel hot is that the molecules in your body and the molecules of the air uh, surrounding your body are moving very rapidly. And the more rapidly the molecules move, the hotter you are. And some of you look a little hot up there. And I hope you don't get uncomfortable. Um, well, there are many things that we can do that are hot. Um, if we're going to demonstrate heat, I suppose the first thing we should do is make something hot. So I'm going to take a Bunsen burner here. Most of you have probably studied chemistry at some time in your life, and I'm going to light the Bunsen burner to produce some heat. Well, better get a good match, though. There we go. Okay, now we're making heat. Now, this is another experiment that you could do at home if you wish. Um, it's a, you have to be careful, however, because it involves heat. Now, at home, you probably don't have a Bunsen burner, but I suppose you have a stove, right? And you could uh, take a pop can, an orange crush can I'm using, and you'll see why I'm using an orange crush can in a minute. I'll take the orange crush can, and I'll put a little water in it, just maybe a half an inch of water. And I'll put it here on the, orange, on the uh, Bunsen burner uh, to warm up. Now, who knows at what temperature uh, water boils? 100 degrees. Now, is that uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius? Celsius. Okay, and Fahrenheit, what would it be? 212 degrees Celsius. Very good, except that's wrong. Uh, you've probably always uh, thought that, but in fact, water boils at that temperature only at atmospheric pressure, only at sea level. If you go up on a mountain, in fact, if any of you have lived out in Colorado, you may know that it's harder to boil an egg. You have to boil it longer. And that's because water boils at a lower temperature when the atmospheric pressure is lower. Now, I can illustrate that here. In fact, I can actually boil something without heating it up at all. I can take water and I can boil it without heating it. And in fact, behind me here, I have a demonstration which does precisely that. Here I have a vacuum pump connected to a little flask of ordinary, well, it's actually distilled water. Um, and I'm going to evacuate this. And as I do so, you'll see the needle here come down towards zero indicating that I've taken all the air out above the water. And if you just watch, you will see that as I do that, the water very quickly begins to boil. And it's not hot at all. I can touch it. Now, I want you to just keep watching that for a moment because something even stranger is going to happen, I hope. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't. As I feel it, it's not getting warm at all, yet it's boiling away. Can you see what happened? Maybe in the back it's hard to see. It froze, turned into ice. What temperature does water freeze at? Who knows? Who, what temperature? 32 Fahrenheit, or zero degrees Celsius. And in fact, this water, even though it was boiling, began to freeze. And I'll just turn the pump off here because we're done with it now. And I'll let the air back in, as you see here. And it will remain frozen. And as I feel it, it is indeed cold. And it is real ice. So how was I able to boil something and then have it turn into ice? Well, in fact, what happens is that as it boils, heat is leaving the water. Right? When something boils, heat leaves the thing that's boiling. As it does so, it takes heat away from the water, and the water cools off until finally um, the water freezes. And so you see, with a vacuum, you can not only uh, cause something to boil, but you can also cause it to freeze. Now let's see how our little can is doing here. Um, you see a little bit of something coming out the top indicating that it's boiling, right? Now what I'm going to do is take this can, and I'm going to take some tongs here. I don't know whether you have anything like this at home, but... Uh, you probably have some kind of tongs in your kitchen that you can pick up something hot with. And if you just boil your can on the stove for a while and pick it up and turn it upside down in some water, look what happens. 
Now you can see why I used an orange crush can. Oops. So that's one you can do at home, but I should explain what happened. Why did it crush? Well, now think about it. We started with the can with air in it and a little bit of water in the bottom, right? As we began to heat it, what happened to the water? It boiled, and the water turned into what? Steam, right. And the steam then filled the can, pushed the air out. So then after a while, we had a can filled with primarily steam, with maybe a little water in the bottom. And when we turned it upside down in the water, that water being cold caused the steam to rapidly condense. And when the steam condenses, it changes back into water, and the water takes up much less volume than the, than the steam did. So that left a partial vacuum inside this can, a vacuum strong enough to cause the can to crush. Now, you may have thought the water would just get sucked up inside, and it would have, except the steam condensed so rapidly and the hole was sufficiently small that uh, it couldn't go up in here fast enough to keep the can from crushing. So you can do that uh, little demonstration at home and amuse your friends by uh, crushing a can. Um, 